Um, first of all, welcome everybody to Conversations. We have Scientific, Mr. Michael Massey in the building, representing Maslin, Ken, Stark County. Yeah, all <laughs> that. I need some background music over here. So. <laughs> Sydney, you're thinking music. I feel like I need some background music or something. Something. I can dig it. I can dig it. How you feeling today, my brother? Man, I feel pretty good, man. Busy day, huh? Yeah, just got off work. Just got off work. Okay, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. All right, we're going to jump into this now. Yeah. <clears throat> Born in Ken, right? Yes. Okay. How'd you end up in Madison? Uh, my mom moved over there early, about four, when I was about four years old. They, the family moved over there. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was down. They was on the. They was on the same block with the Leverts. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so how did how did you get into the music, man? Like, like, what in your childhood motivated you to want to do music? Um. Well, I was always a, a huge Big Daddy Kane fan. Okay. So, um, he was kind of my inspiration in that regards, and you know, <clears throat> hearing hearing um. Uh, Big Curry, Curry Cleveland rap early in uh, um, L.C. Jones days. He, he just hearing him, his uh, his presence. Yeah. Now uh, looking back at it, his presence and um, his confidence in his in his cadence and the delivery <clears throat> is that you know it kind of attracted me because the way he moved people at that time. Right. Yeah. Clay was an animal. He was an animal. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah, now, um, you were also playing sports at the same time, right? Yeah, playing a little basketball, you know, trying to, trying to, trying to get myself into college. <clears throat> so it's been all basketball and rap. Okay, okay. So, so what happened with the hoop? Like, um, <clears throat> I stopped growing at 6'2". <laughs> I stopped growing at 6'2". Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was like um, I went to college and shit, and then I ended up catching the charge. So that kind of – and they wanted me to go to different schools. <clears throat> and at the time, uh, my arrogance wouldn't allow me to go down to a smaller, like, D2, D3 school to work my way back up because I already thought I was D1. So right. I didn't want to sit out like that. Wow. So looking geez. back, though, looking back, I did it the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have did it the same way. <clears throat> okay. Now, now you said you got into a little bit of trouble. Like, what happened, or can you speak on what happened? And you know, how how did that influence you? Um. Well, yeah, I got into a little. I uh, had a little drug charge, and then, um, about a year and a half later, got into a a, a, a little altercation outside the bar, where a man mm -hmm. had lost his life, and then Ooh. I went. Yeah, I went away for some time, and uh, through that, it's just the, uh, the the you know the time that I got to spend by myself and uh, to to hone the skills, <clears throat> participating on yard day, and just rocking crowds and performing with live bands. So I was already performing with live bands from doing it from doing it in the joint. <clears throat> so. Um, and then there, just yeah, just just studying because it was other it was other swordsmen in there that was sharp, right? That was sharp. That was sharp too. So it was just like it was like when I was when that uh when I was with that that that, uh, that one group I was with Area Fifty One. Okay. They had, they had a lot of sharp swords, and it, and it kind of kept everybody, you know what I'm saying, chiseled. So. Right. So so mentally, when you're incarcerated, like. Did did you did you feel the pressure? Was was it, you know how 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 did you keep yourself up? Uh, <clears throat> um, I one one I never thought that I would do all the time, you know. So that kind of kept that kind of drove me daily to know like okay I ain't about to be here every day. Just knock whatever you got to do out handle you know. So that kind of drove me, um, and then just um um studying. Finding things different, 
because I, I, I'm seeing now, you know, that everything is temporary. So in, in, in this temporary phase that we're in, um, we attach on something, we latch on to something to kind of get us through, you know what I'm right. saying? So, um, so I started studying and just studying and attaching on to different um, sciences and, you know, Spanish and, and different cultures and just um, sports and stuff like that. <clears throat> I was already athletically gifted, so just transitioning and just playing sports and just relating to all the people, that's, how, that's what kept me going. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Now, when your arrival, when you touched down back home, what, what was your whole mental uh, process? What was your goal? Mm -hmm. What were you looking to do? Um, I'm going to give you some of it. I'm going to hold some of it. I'm going to hold some of it for now because I'm going to speak about this later. But um, uh, when you touch, when, well, when I touched, it was just like, it was a shock. It was a, a shock from coming from an environment now, the, what I'm saying, the prison environment that I normalized. Like, I started living that as an everyday life. And then to come out here and then uh, to know that that normal life ain't normal and adjusting back to this side, uh, it was, that's, it was it's, you know, it's still a process. It's still a process. It's still the process. It's not, it's not, because <clears throat> you got to think that you raised, we raised in society one way. So we're wired one, we're wired one way to, um, to be, to love thy neighbor, right? And then when you go in, when you go in there, your defense has got to be up all the time because you don't know. You never know what's going to happen. So you always, and then when you come back out here, your defense is still up to think that everybody's a threat and they're not. Okay. They're not. You know, you develop this um, this hypersensitivity or this hypervigilance, you know, where you're always looking around. You might see them dudes that's locked up. They're always looking around. That's 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 hypervigilant because they just use it's just a natural thing now because you always just got to look around, not because of fear or or like because you ain't you scared. Or it's just a OK, I got to be on my shit. You got to be on your toes. Right. Man, so that that so you're saying you're still <clears throat> just a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'm still adjusting because I still look at innocent people as threats. Mm. You know, just, just based off of um, just just uh, 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 trust, trust factors, you know what I'm saying, trust issues being broken. Mm. You know, because that's a, that's a traumatizing experience. Yeah, I, I was going to say that that had to be a, a lot of mental trauma there. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of mental trauma there, definitely. And then you got to think that that most of us that go to prison was already traumatized. We was raised in single parent homes. You know what I'm saying? That's trauma. Right. Street life. Trauma. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because it's it's kind of like um kind of like when uh people join the service and go to war, pretty much. Right. Right. You know, just it's just a, come a, back. Edge. Yeah, it's a shock factor. It's a shock factor. So, so what are your coping mechanisms to to deal with that? <clears throat> um, lately, lately I've been going to counseling. I speak to somebody now. Uh, I had a, a, a while ago I had a problem speaking with somebody because I thought that um they wouldn't challenge me mentally, and that mm -hmm. I thought I thought that they wouldn't be able to relate because they hadn't been to prison. You know, most of those people that speaking to us are just you know, educated per se by the book. Right. So, but when she broke it down that she had spoken to prisons and did all this and that, you know, her, uh, she had a biracial uh, parent and she was her, she got divorced and this, um, you know, speaking about stuff that I, you know, that we kind of encounter every day where we from. And so I, I was like, should I trust you? And I just broke down, you know, just speaking to her. So I've been speaking to her for about a couple, uh, maybe a couple months now. Okay. How how hard is it for you to open up? Are you have you opened all the way up or is it oh, still yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm transparent now. I'm transparent. I can I can I'm as open as a book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At, at first it it's at first it was tough because you think about um the observation and and and, and how judgmental people can be and right. you don't really want to wait that you don't really want that win on top of the Already, uh, shit you already got to deal with. 
catching back up in the society, being back behind child support. When the crazy, the crazy dynamic is that is that when you're an inmate or a prisoner, you're not even counted towards the census. So you're not even part of the population. But, but they can charge you child support. Hold on. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't even part of the population, but they still charge you child support and you come home and you're behind. And now you're chasing, you're chasing and chasing. You're chasing. You're still trying to fix you. And again, remember, we get locked up as kids. We get right. locked up as kids and then coming back out. And now we're still trying to run around and run around. we still getting fixing. Right. Man, it's just, it's, it's wild. So, so the therapy has been really good for you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. And, and that's why I always tell people, I like, man, sometimes you really got to talk talk to somebody and it seems like we especially being black men we feel always feel like we can tough it out right 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 you know what i'm saying like roll something drink something and uh it'd be, i'll be all right in the morning right yeah i, I think we really definitely gotta embrace counseling i tell people mm -hmm. ain't nothing wrong with talking to somebody but I think, but I think also, I think also though, um, me and a couple of my friends, we got, we call ourselves accountability partners. So we got, we got, and they, and we were all incarcerated. But there's each one I have at least four friends that I can call and bear my soul. You know what I'm saying? It without a, you know what I'm saying? And they, they, we all do the same. They know that. So I think it's also important to have people around you outside of therapy that you still can feel comfortable about talking about certain things. Right. Some real ones that's going to mm. be honest with you and be like, nah, I don't know about that. Right. Right. Wow. Yeah. Most definitely. The yeses don't challenge you. No. <laughs> they, 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 and, and a lot of times, yes, people are just along for the ride for whatever reason. Right. You know what I'm saying? They just want to be around. And, and I can definitely relate because um, I, I have a group of gentlemen that, you know, we, we just kind of, no matter what it is, relationships or whatever the problem is, we can talk as men and, and, and be ourselves and be real, you know, even on an emotional level and get good feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's very important. And, and I like to see that be better in our community instead of be like, oh, nigga, you too, man. Quit being soft. And right, right, right. That's what it comes down to. And then the therapy for me, the, I think the therapy side is that is that you can go in there and get an unbiased and just let, you know, let it out. And right. because sometimes, sometimes with me, for me, the information, even though I'm transparent, I may not want to tell my friends because I don't want their opinion. You know what I'm saying? I may not want their opinion. So I can tell my therapy. Where I know I'm like, fuck it, she don't know me. I'm she gonna give it to me raw and I don't you know what I'm saying? So I'll just give it to her. Right. But, cause, cause she she doesn't have a history or nothing like that. It's yeah. just y'all on the same level that we're meeting right here, and this is where it's at. Yep. That's pretty dope. Now, how how do how do you think that affects your music? Um, which part? What and what you what you mean? <clears throat> the therapy. <clears throat> um I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm the writing lately has become easier because I've been a, a little more peaceful. I've mm -hmm. been a little bit, a little more, a little more at peace. Um, because I'm getting explanations and understandings of things that I, you know, that I thought I understood. And then right. it's, kind of, you know, getting the feedback is like, hold on. Like, Oh, I didn't know. Right. Oh, I didn't see it this way. Nobody gave it to me this way. So, it's helping me in that regard, so my writing is getting a little more freer because I've been peaceful. That's what's up, because I know a lot of times we um, kind of get caught up in the term knowledge of self, but I think understanding of self is just as important, if not more important, than knowledge of self. Oh, it's definitely more important. It's definitely more important. Understanding is the best part. So um, to be able to 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 be able to, to to shine that knowledge, you know what I'm saying? To be able to to reflect that knowledge or or manifest that knowledge is 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 definitely the best part. 
Right. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. So, so it's showing up in your writing skills, and is is it changing up your subject matter? Or are you tapping into subjects that maybe you probably wouldn't tap into before? Uh, I can't say that because I I think I think with my with my background, uh, cultural background, and just uh, background with basketball and just my background with education and just learning and wanting to know things I've already, I've always been able to touch on any subject and feel comfortable. So right. now, now it's just time trying different sounds, getting out of my sound box and just trying different rhyme patterns. That's all. Other than that, the subject matter, I can, yeah, I'm going to keep you interested. Okay. And I noticed you're very good with kids, man. Oh uh, yeah. 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 I love, I love, I love C's. They, they love me. They love me. Um, I think that I think that um, the prison dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. the prison dynamic of being of being uh, knocked out of society for a minute. So always, you know, just be, as a child being locked up and then coming out still frozen, so to speak, at that childlike mentality. I think that even though I was incarcerated, yet yeah, that was a bad thing. The benefit of it kind of helped me deal with the children because I know how to get them out that, that, um, that shy, that phase, you know what I'm saying? Where I can open them up from me being a kid, me acting like a kid, you know, they relate to me. So. Yeah. And that's dope. Cause I've seen it firsthand. Cause I, um, I brought my son uh, yeah. to work out a couple of times. <laughs> he, he loved it, man. I, I can't wait to show him this interview cause he's 20 years old now. And He's still trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. yeah, twenty years old, and you know the, the the mind is still forming. The mind ain't fully formed till we thirty. So, right. so he's still it's still impressionable. Yeah, very impressionable. You know, and I and I try my best to keep him motivated. That's why I, that's that's another reason why I wanted to <laughs> holler at you. So, like, hey, remember your old coach had you out up in Hartford getting it? Listen to him. <laughs> Cause I, I'm I'm a firm believer that it does take a village because I think as as parents, um, our voice might get a little stale. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know and and I always tell you know I'm I tell people I like hey, if you see my son and he going left, holler at him. <laughs> right, I think that I think that that's what some of some of the um today's issues in the children are now is the lack of the village that you speak of. Yeah. You know, and we really got to get back to that. No doubt. So let's tap into your catalog. <clears throat> now, you're, you're about to release a project, right? Yeah, I just released a, uh, a single about two or three days ago. Okay. Um, I'm working on a um a EP with Ricky Hyde. He's okay. producing it from BSF. And then we working on a uh a, a collective with myself and uh two two other uh three three oh artists. Okay. Yeah. okay. That, yeah, that, hey, you yeah. see the smile on my face when I said that. Hey man, yeah. I'm telling you, man, hey, it makes me so happy, man. When we work together, it makes me so happy, man. It makes me feel so good. Yeah. Now, a few months ago, what, you was in New York working with somebody, I think, because you did a video shoot, like, in New yeah, York? We, in, uh, we went to New York, and we did a video shoot with 38 Special, or 38 Special, as he called now, and um, Class Murder from mm -hmm. that, from 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 Trust, and uh, 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 Class is signed with Casanova. Okay, so how was that experience for you? Oh, it was great. It was great hanging out and just uh, – being in a being in the environment, well, with class murder, we was kind of like in his neighborhood. And then, funny story, um, we get there, and my producer, Sean Dean, his cousin is from the same spot from um, Rochester, so okay. we meet him up there. We meet him up there, and him and his, and class murder and his cousin knew each other. It was like, man, what you what, man, where you been? And, you know, so <laughs> so it was all it was just it was genuine. It was like an extended extended hug you know right small world small yeah that world. was cool that was cool yep man 
So um, how, how many albums have you done? I got uh, two full albums out, uh, Science Project Volume 1 and um, Carnival Doors. And I think right now I probably got uh, 12 other singles out. Okay. I had to guess roughly 10 to 12 other singles out. And then we gain, we got two. I think that this collective album is going to be the, is going to be the hardest album in the year out. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like the new, um, it's like, I was like Midwest Slaughterhouse or some Midwest Griselda or Midwest Trust type, or like, we just got some, some swordsmen, man. And it's right at the time, right at the time where it's swordsmen out here. Yeah, I was gonna say, how how do you feel about um, lyricists are coming back? It's just perfect. It was just like it's perfect. I mean, it had to. And I and and again, I I like to credit them boys out of New Buffalo for you know pushing and grinding and grinding and grinding, and getting they signed out there and getting they sound out there. And then right. you know the um some of the older artists with that kind of same sound, snatch them and embracing them to keep our sound alive. While 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 other people catch up, you know what I'm saying. While other people follow these trends, the trends of the lyricism back. So it's it's uh it's 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 beautiful. It's beautiful. Now being an artist from Ohio, and, and you're traveling, what's the biggest difference you you see? You know, especially as an independent artist, compared to like when you go to New York and all that. Like like, what's the biggest difference? Um, they're a little more together. A little more together, you know what I'm saying? As far as like team, we're a team. As far as like this whole, just having a lot more bodies, a lot more, you okay. know what I'm saying? A lot of yeah. more part of the part of the squad to make it look more like it's supposed to look. They got the look down. They got mm -hmm. the look down. You know. Okay. And do you feel like there's just like a lack of unity, like especially like in Stark County? What what what's what's one of the problems you see around here? Um, there's there's I think it's I think everybody just everybody's confident. You know, it ain't I don't think I don't think it's a problem. I think that as independent artists and with everybody with this, I once said it in a line like a uh, 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 saturated cesspool. Like everybody's in this, it's so saturated. So, but everybody believes that they're that thing, as we all should. So sometimes it's hard for some people to set aside or. They want to get their sound out or because it would make perfect sense to for 10, 10 independent artists to put 500. That, that'd be the thing doing the pyramid there. All of us put 500 behind him. Next turn is his turn. Next turn is his turn to everybody get their marketing out. Get they, You know what I'm saying? That would be the thing to do if we was going, you know, but um, I just think everybody confident and, and believe in their own sound. And then everybody got people that they prefer, that they comfortable recording with or rapping with. One or two guys, and that's it. You know, um, I've been over the last couple of years. I've been trying to get form this super group of, of of guys that I know that are industry ready artists. You know what I'm saying? And I know it, and I feel like that that they can rap with some of the best of them guys and be on tracks with some of them and would po make possible hits with the best of them guys. It's just uh, uh, the exposure, just getting it out there, right? Or, 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 or having the independent money to put the money behind. The marketing and stuff. Yeah, so money is definitely a factor. It's definitely a factor. Who um who, who are some of your favorite producers that that uh, you enjoy working with? Um, definitely, definitely Sean Dean. You know, that's the home team. Um, he produced um probably 80 percent 80, 80 of my catalog. Mm. Uh, we got a lot yeah, of that's, under, your, got, so that's your go to guy, huh? Yeah, we got a lot of unreleased music too that uh may be popping his head up sooner or later, you know. Just uh -huh. just get some things tweaked out. Um I work with uh oh um uh Quantez. I work with Quantez and he had about he had about four four beats on my album on his Carnival Doors album, my second album. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so them is the them is the them is the two producers that I've worked with mainly around in the area. I got one track from Cons. I got one track from Cons before. And that was the, actually Cons produced the um the track that actually they got the most spins right now is that ride with Beanie Siegel. Myself, oh. Pirates and Beanie Siegel. That's been it's got like thirty thousand, forty thousand spins or something like that. Man, yeah, Cons definitely gets it in too. He, mm -hmm. he 
You you got some hard working producers oh, behind. Hold on, 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 hold on. Almost forgot. My man Joe. I like work. Joe is an ill producer too. And Joe done produced like four or five of my joints. I almost slipped that, you know. I I hear that? Yes, Joe Allende, yeah. The sensei. Okay. That's the sensei, man. Yeah, you can't forget about him. Yeah, he, I, <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I was thinking mainly when you said producer, I went straight. and Producer, right, producer. Right, I went straight to, but I ain't even going to say that because Joe producer, producer. I'm going to say he a producer, producer. I'm going to give him his, okay. you know. He do a little bit of everything here. Comedian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what are some of your uh, favorite lyricists that you enjoy working with? Um, that I enjoy working with? Well, um, Ransom. I like working with Ransom. Uh, and I just actually text Ransom. He texts me back. And I told him, you know, he's on my album. And I felt like he did me real dirty. I felt like he renegated me on that. <laughs> and I told him. I need some get back, you know. I was just I'm like, yo, what's up? I need some get back, man. Right. And uh so I like working with Rand just because uh and I I've known him. You know, I've known him. He he's been around a long time. Mm -hmm. Um who else? Uh going to travel, going to travel and, and linking up with Stally was fun down in Atlanta. That was cool. Oh. That was that was a cool experience to hang out with him and his family. Get to see the city a little bit. And then yeah. you know, being the home team, so um, plan on doing anything else with Stally again? Yeah, probably so. We've been we keep in touch. We keep in touch fairly often now. Okay. Um, yep. So we talk about a lot of different things, uh, a possible EP, and just trying to work things out, ironing things out to see how things make sense, and maybe possible a couple shows and stuff like that. Okay. Now, how did you hook up with Benny Siegel? Uh, Benny Siegel, um, he was in Columbus. He was in Columbus and at my man Pyrex studio. Okay. And Pyrex hit me up and said Benny was Benny Siegel was here. I'm like, oh, psh, I'm there. I'll be there shortly. <laughs> Let me get, come down there. You know, you catch him in town. You catch him in town uh, <laughs> after a show, before a show. You know the features. You know. The, the feature prices be a lot cheaper. So right. we caught him. We caught him at a nice time and um turned out pretty it turned out pretty cool. That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. How 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 was the studio vibe like with Bings? Oh, 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 now the stu now now I will say that. The studio vibe, his his recording, I never seen nobody record like him. And I Ooh. can't even explain it. The way he was laying his vocals and and the way he was, he was laying half, it was like he was laying half his vocal and then come back and punch in the other half, but it was making it all sound like it went all, like he said it all at once. And I, I couldn't, I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? You know what I'm saying? I never seen nobody, and that's what I, he was recording, he would be like, I'm spitting this. Like he'd go in there and say that, like, I'm spitting this. And then he'd come punch that back in and say, raps for my chest. But from a, like, it, it was just weird. It was just weird. Like, I'd never seen it myself. And I'm like, I'm like, I was just like, yo, this is what pro, this is how, this is pro recording. This is how the pros record. <laughs> it was like that feeling when people said they was in a, were you on a couple of interviews where we saw people said when they was in a studio with Big or Jay and they was just yeah. like in awe, like in awe, like, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of like one of those. Because at that time he was probably the, you know what I'm saying, the most heavyweight artist that I had came in contact with. Right. In the actual studio. You know what I'm saying? And then that made me, I was like, okay. Oh, I'm about to cook him. I'm like, I'm about to cook him on this record. <laughs> so 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 what nuggets did you get out of that studio session, like technique wise? Um, none that I have applied myself. <laughs> but um, um it was just something to add to my if I ever have a problem or maybe I can, you know what I'm saying? Just work. And, and then being able to work with that engineer, because me, now me and him got a relationship. So we're, I go down here and I'm recording with him all the time. So, okay. Okay. So you working, networking and, and just got it popping. Yeah. It's, it's fun, man. It's fun, man. I'm trying to stay. Man. stay young, man. Now tell, tell me about this uh, newest video y'all just shot. This the song for the for this video y'all just did. 
okay, we just shot a song, uh, this video called Wonder. Okay. And it's like a um, country R&B hip hop joint. <laughs> if I, <laughs> it got like a it got like a country feel. And after now, now with me saying that, after you hear it, you're gonna be like, oh, okay. You're gonna hear the country feel to it. And then the melodic singing with uh uh with Nikasa a little bit and infinite just but it's it's, it's um it's gonna be off the album, that conglomerate collective album. Mm -hmm. um, radio friendly, fun track, energetic, a different type of, you know, vibe from the the typical shoot 'em up bang bang or the right. the, the raunchy club stuff. Just a fun club, dancing record, but not, but not commercial, but not commercial. Just fun, clean. So, yeah, not corny. Yeah. Oh, it ain't corny. It ain't corny. Right. We ain't putting like, nothing corny out. Yeah. Just, just nice. Feel good. Yeah. Feel just good. feel good. Fun. Why, laugh. Why, 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 why do you think people have got away from doing feel good music? Um, I think, I think we're. Uh, cursed to believe that the music that the shoot 'em up bang bang is the, is that the image that's portrayed is that that's what we got to do all the time. That's what I think. That's what I think. As far and that and, and e, as you because you hear it in R and B, you even hear the the gangster shit in R and B now. Yeah, and we have been hearing it for a while. You got you got some 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 singers with some bomb voices. Talking about, you know what I'm saying, doing something crazy to you. Yeah. <laughs> you know ain't, ain't, ain't trying to talk about love or nothing. Ain't trying to turn a house, near house into a home. Yeah. Man, it's, yeah, R&B &R is, I don't know. I uh, I check for the Neo Soul a lot. Yeah. I kinda, I'm, I'm strong on that vein right now when it comes to Neo Soul. R&B is pretty much the same thing. I don't even know. What's up with these categories? Right. Very weird. Very weird. So, so what are you listening to? Um, Hop in the whip. You about to roll to Cleveland. What you putting in? Right now, let me see. Um, I would probably just throw on Pandora because uh, I would, well, I haven't listened to, I, well, yeah, I would just throw on Pandora because I got a, a group of artists that I like. And and if I'm in album mode, if I'm in writing mode, like as far as like if I'm working on an album, then I don't listen to nobody. Like I don't listen exactly. to nobody. I just listen to the beats and I ride and listen to instrumentals. I may hear that beat for an hour, hour and a half, and I'm constructing bars in my head to Cleveland or to Maslin or to Columbus. So if I'm right, if I'm like I said, if it's my album mode, I ain't listen to nobody. But I'll listen to uh, Benny. I'll throw some Benny the Butcher in. I'll throw some Jay Electronic in. I'll throw some, definitely throwing Nas in, especially after what he just did. Oh, my. Oh, King's Disease 2. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Hey, and, and the crazy thing is not the King Disease 1, but the the one he dropped with uh Kanye, the seven-song joint, when they was in that phase where everybody was dropping seven songs. And, yeah. I heard it, and I said, man, damn, I hate to say it, but Nas need to stop. I said, he need to stop. I didn't like it. I just felt like it just sounded old. Like, I'm like, nah, man, please, no. And he came back with them two King's diseases? Oh, my. Yeah, that Kanye project, I was like, don't ever get with Kanye again. No. I was blaming Kanye. No, no. Kanye was, <laughs> Kanye's production is not for Nas. Yeah, like, and, and the vibe, you know, Nas is a vibe guy. Yeah. And I could tell that just didn't, and he don't even talk about that. It's, it's like it didn't happen. Right, right, right. One of them. <laughs> but that man, that King's Disease took man, that Lauryn Hill verse. That was powerful. She she spoke. Um, she was just talking about, and, and then the perception of what people thought and the way, you know what I'm saying? She, yeah, she spoke yeah. to you like, yeah, y'all don't, y'all never know. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know this and that. She, yeah, she was speaking to the people. And, Man, and, and she answered the thing is she answered a lot of questions that people was asking in the verse. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? She just answered all the questions that all the all the headlines that she was reading that people were saying this about Lauren Hill and this and this and this and that. She answered them all in that verse. <laughs> yeah. 
It was almost like a female version of Kwame Brown. Like, I ain't said nothing in 20 years. <laughs> mm, right, right, right. It, it, was, it was so re refreshing, man. I was just like, thank you. Yeah, the whole, the, whole, the, whole, the whole joint, man, all the way through. Yeah, man. I think I listened to that thing, like, when it first dropped, like, three times, first thing in the morning. Yeah. I just kept playing it through. Just, man, Nas is incredible. He's definitely incredible. What industry artist would you like to work with, like do a joint with? Uh, Joel Ortiz. Joel Ortiz. Um, J Electronica. Um, just just say some of my favorites. Uh, I would love, you know, Esco. Um, like that's just off the top. Yeah. Benny, Benny, Benny the Butcher. He that that dude is just he's he's treacherous. Yes, yes. He's treacherous. I I haven't heard one. I haven't heard one trash lyric. I haven't heard one trash lyric from him. I, I mean, since I've heard, I, I mean, I haven't heard one whack sixteen from him. And this dude be killing features. Yeah, yeah. He 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 brings it every time. He's he's, he's definitely in that rare air. <laughs> He's definitely in that red air. So that's, now, that's just off rip. Those guys off rip that I can think of. Now, what are some of the things you currently have going on outside of music right about now? Um. Well, <clears throat> before the COVID, before the COVID hit, now we're trying to figure out um, how to transition. But we had we had the um, the boys basketball training. Well, the the basketball training. Boys and girls, excuse me. I don't want to negate my my female ballers out there because I had some beasts. Um, so we had the training going on a few times a week with the Vertimax and skills training. Um, mm -hmm. And again, COVID kind of set that to a halt. Um, and then the transition of me moving from 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 Canton and Maslin to Columbus, and uh, just trying to network down here and figure. And then it, the gyms was closed and everything. It was so that was. And then uh, uh, we got me and my friend Paris just started a, um, a hot dog stand called Let's Talk Let's Talk About Dogs or Hot Dogs and Talk uh, Hot Dogs and Coney Dogs and Tacos called Let's Talk About Dogs. Where is this located? Um, we got a food truck, so we so we've done a couple events. We did the African American Art Festival downtown in Canton, and then we did Juneteenth downtown uh down at, at the park and uh we got a, a football team coming up monday of 60 kids and some parents this monday coming up so um we've been doing that's fun been doing that interacting with the people and again that that um the basketball talking to the parents all the time and you know the communicating and working with the kids Trans translated well over into the taco, the dogs, because I can interact with as whereas you know, Paris may or may not be shyer than you know what I'm saying. So it helped, it all helped, it all tied together for me. I gotta try your dogs out because I'm like a Coney King. I oh, yeah. yeah, we got whatever you want. You got you, you got you got your choice of a uh, a beef Coney dog, a turkey Coney dog. Or a veggie coney dog, and or a beef sausage, turkey sausage, or veggie sausage, with the veggie coney sauce, or the beef coney sauce, or the turkey coney sauce, and we spe we specially made this, you know, we specially made this. like my the, my baby toe is in there, my baby like <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's it's got a twang to it in there. So you got chef skills like, wait, you, you... We got a little bit. We got a little bit, and we got, you know, some assistance. You know, we got a little bit. We got some assistance with some of the, some of the uh, recipes at first because, naturally, we weren't just natural-born cooks. So we got some help with some of the recipes, and then well, um, and we had to cook it. We had to. We was forced to cook it, though, and, trust, and run some test runs and stuff like that, get our ups right. and downs. Some of our sauces weren't as good as the others, and then we finally tweaked it, and it, there it is. Let's talk about dogs. <laughs> LLC. There it is. Now I, I saw you at an event not too long ago. Um your brother has a spot. 
Oh uh, yeah. Um yes, the mental health um cafe. It's called the Greatness Cafe downtown Maslin, inside the okay. Maslin Museum. So we had a ribbon ribbon cutting ceremony uh a couple weeks ago with the mayor. Uh real big turnout. We was expecting 150 people and we ended up having 347 people. Ooh. Ran out of some things, you know what I'm saying? So it was a good turnout. And since then we've had good steady traffic. Uh and also just to switch it up to we giving out more healthier options with all the COVID and all this stuff going on. So you got bladder root and the sea moss stuff. We got all that stuff down there in the elderberry inside of our the cauliflower, the kale. We got green smoothies. So we're trying to, you know, we're very uh conscientious of the of of, of what's going on in our health too. Wow, that, so so what what's the premise? Like who like what who decided was you and your brother or is just your brother's yeah, idea? My brother my brother's idea. He had his idea been in the making for about five years. Five okay. years now. And he was telling, you know, he told us five years that hey, I'm gonna get this cafe, I'm gonna get this cafe, I'm gonna get this cafe. So the opportunity presented itself for he to come back home. You know, he didn't want to come back to Ohio. You know, he didn't you know, he was living good out there in California. Opportunity came up for him to come back home and open a cafe in his own hometown and you know with the with the blessings of the mayor and the and the blessings of uh a lot of the higher uppers in the city we just made it work and it's a very good very good outlet uh, outlet for people to come down and sit down in politics so you also getting healthy choices and then you on on staff you have a mental health um suicide prevention expert uh a, wow. a, a speaker you know what i'm saying uh, um all that uh, anti-bullying you got you got people on the staff that have dealt with all that stuff so so not only are you getting some type of mental health while you're there you know saying some type of almost free therapy you're also getting a good healthy uh uh, uh meal so you can go in and grab your little something if you're feeling some type of way actually have an opportunity to sit down and talk to somebody absolutely absolutely congratulations that's well, dope you know, all over a smoothie. You know, hey, let hey, that's like that's like taking your friend, like, hey man, let's go out to eat and just go get a smoothie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you don't talk about it. So in a sense, you come down and get a smoothie, you could end up in therapy, so to speak, but you could also be meeting a friend. You know? Right. So it's a very good, very good thing we got going on down there. Yeah, that congratulations. That that that's amazing. That's amazing. So um, what what do we have to look forward to from scientific moving forward? Like like, what should we look out for? Um, look out for the uh, EP EP the Street Side produced by Ricky Hyde. Look out for the conglomerate, the collective. Um, I've auditioned for a couple voiceover roles and some short films and uh, commercials. So mm -hmm. I might be popping up on that. That's all I can say about that. Um, hey, don't y'all gotta join on uh, Amazon? Amazon Prime, yeah, we shot a film. I yeah. believe it's I believe it's been up there a year and a half now, maybe two years. Okay. Um, called uh, Music Above It All, uh, co-starring myself and Joe Allende is the main artist, but then a lot of uh, uh, three three O artists and talent down our way started the film, put a film together. Lex Dawson, shout out to him. Um, he put the film together. Uh, I am wishing you a speedy recovery on that back surgery, brother. You know, Lex, I'm not a commit. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. So in, in closing, for the youth, especially these young brothers, what advice or or what what would you say to them just just to help them get in the get in the right path of trying to figure it out? Uh, the first two things will be um, um, to take care of your teeth. Um, take care of your teeth and uh, take care of your credit. <laughs> That's the first thing. Take care of your teeth and take care of your credit. Um, but but um, seriously, uh, not afraid to ask questions. If there's any concerns, you know what I'm saying? If you have something troubling you, talking to somebody, and always know because I had a problem with thinking that my way was always the right way because I felt like I was always a little more precocious than my peers. So I always felt like I was right. 
you know, until you hear somebody else, hear another perspective, you know what I'm saying? And then you figure out that you, you keep finding yourself in these situations, but you're the one making all the decisions. Why don't you go ahead and talk to somebody? Let somebody else give you some insight. You know what I'm saying? So, and, uh, just taking some advice, um, not knowing it all. Um, that's, I mean, that's, that's what I'll, uh, uh, being around people, surround yourself with good people, surround yourself with good people. Yep. Yeah. That, that's very important because your, your, your crowd can dictate a lot of your future. Absolutely. It, it, it can definitely dictate your future. That's what's up. Man, I want to thank you so much for your time, man. It's, it's been very informative. I think a lot of people are going to get something out of this, you know, that, and that's always my whole goal. I mean, it's cool to talk about music and all that, but at the end of the day, we got to live life. Yes, sir. And, 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 and speaking of that mental health uh, thing on August 26th, I'll be going live on IG and on Facebook speaking about the inside and the incarcerated side of mental health. And that's, you know, saying I wanted to hold some of that. That's why I want to go too much into what I was speaking about because um, it's my first time speaking about it. So I'm trying to feel, I wanted to uh, speak to you a little bit about it so I can get some of it out. But then, right. okay, now, okay, now I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready. So <laughs> August, August 26 at the God Hour, the seven o'clock. For those who don't know, um, probably about 45 minutes. Then probably do about a seven, seven minute, uh, a seven quest, question Q and A, seven yeah. Q and A, and then uh, get out of there. And hopefully, um, hopefully at the end of it, people will be able to understand um, an incarcerated loved one or incarcerated family member, or friend, a little better. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's all about helping somebody, man. At the end of the day, I think that's the highest reward. If if you just help one person, you know, you you might have a hundred people check for it, but if you just get one person, you make a difference. Victory. Yeah, me and my brother side, we had a song like that. It's called One Life, and it was all about if you could just save one life. It was like you know you done you done you done your job, so to speak. If you can save more, that's great. But yeah, if you save one, you know what I'm saying? You've done your job. No, no doubt, no doubt. All right, man, go ahead and get your rest. You had a long day. I want to thank you so much for your time. It's greatly appreciated, my brother. I appreciate you, and thank you for having me, Al. All right, we'll holler later. All right, peace. Peace. Do, 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 do.